First, let me apologize for this piece of paper because the document I edited I could not send to myself because the internet went down at school today. So here's a picture of the sheet that I filled out like what I did in class. So when you square root something, you either have two positive numbers for your answers or two negative. For example, the square root of 16 could either be positive 4 times positive 4 or it could be negative 4 times negative 4. We write a plus or minus sign in front of all of our answers to take care of either scenario, either two positives or two negatives. So when we simplify, we have to do as much as we possibly can. We are not going to use decimals for our answers, so if something's not a perfect square, you're going to want to factor tree it. So examples of perfect squares would be 4, if you square root that, you get a perfect number, 16, 36, 25, you can think of some of your own, 144, 121. Those are all examples where you do not get decimals. They're very nice to simplify. Non-perfect squares would be like the square root of 3, or the square root of 10, or the square root of 15, or the square root of 20. Sometimes you can factor tree them. A number like 3, you cannot, so that would be as simple as it goes. You could try factor treeing 10, but it only breaks into 2 and 5, and neither of those are a pair. So 10 is as simple as it gets. You could try factor treeing 15, but you kind of have the same situation as 10. Nothing really happens. But if you factor tree 20, you do get 4 times 5. 2 times 2, you do get a pair to escape jail. The 2's come out, and then you'd be left with the square root of 5. So if you had something like 20, the square root of 20, you would need to leave your answer as 2 square root 5. So that's what we're going to be doing. The next issue with this document is I don't have any of the you try problems on here. So I'll do the regular examples and then I'll just let you know what you should get for your answers on the you try problems. So when you have an x squared and no other x's in sight like we have here and the x squared is all alone on one side of the equal sign, all you do to get rid of the square is square root it. And it's sort of like a bow and arrow shooting that two down out of the sky. Pew. So if we square root one side, we have to square root the other side. And we're left with x equals plus or minus 4. The square root of 16 is 4. All right, on the you try for 1a, go ahead and try it. And for that you try, you should get x equals plus or minus 10. So your example 1b is my example 1c. So for 1b, you'll notice that we do have an x squared in this problem with no other x's, but it's not all by itself. So we have to get that x squared all by itself, and we'll do that first by getting rid of the 4. So then we have 3x squared equals 72. So we will divide both sides by 3, and x squared equals 24. Now that the x squared is all by itself, now we can pew, pew, shoot that square down. And x equals plus or minus, well, the square root of 24 is not a perfect square. So off to the side, I'm going to do a factor tree for 24. Let's break it into 4 and 6. 4 breaks into 2 times 2. 6 breaks into 2 times 3. So it looks like we have a pair of 2's that are going to come out front. And then the 2 and 3 are left in jail. When that happens, you multiply them back together. So the answer here is plus or minus 2 square root 6. Go ahead and try the you try on 1b, and I'll tell you the answer in a second. You probably got this down to x squared equals 25 over 4. And then when you divide 25 over 4, you get a decimal. But you don't have to divide that fraction before you square root. You can go ahead and pew, pew, square root. 
And if you notice, 25 is a perfect square, and so is 4. So the u tri comes out to plus or minus. On top, the square root of 25 is 5, and on bottom, the square root of 4 is 2. So that's the uh, answer to the u tri. Here is your example 1c. And you'll notice here we don't have an x squared, we have an x inside parentheses squared. Well, the thing with this is the whole parentheses are squared. So we want to get rid of the squared. How can we do that? Pew, by shooting it down. So we will square root both sides, and it's going to get rid of the parentheses as well as the squared, because we no longer need the x and the minus 1 to be held together in parentheses. The square root of 25 is plus minus 5. One more step to get x by itself. We need to add 1 to both sides. And now we're going to come out with two answers. One of the answers is going to be positive 5 plus 1. So 5 plus 1, x will equal 6. The other answer will be when we do negative 5 plus 1 negative 5 plus 1, so our other answer will be x equals negative 4. So this would be a parabola that crosses the x-axis at 6 and negative 4, like that. I forgot to mention earlier, when you get your two answers, either plus or minus, uh, well, plus or minus 4, two positive 4s or two negative 4s, it means you have a double root. You have a double root either at positive 4, 4 times 4, or you have a double root at negative 4. It's either one of those. And the answer to the u try on 1c, um, the answers are 5 and negative 11. So now let's do 1d. We have an x squared, but it's not all by itself because we have that that x right there. We don't have parentheses. Normally what you would try to do is you'd probably try to get the 27 on the other side. Don't write this down. This is what you'd probably try to do. So that the whole thing equals 0. So 25 minus 27 is negative 2. And then you would try factoring it because so far the only way we've learned to solve quadratics is by factoring. So you would be trying to find the factors of 2 to subtract to get negative 10 but we wouldn't be able to do that anyway. So, we're not going to do that. So that's why I told you not to write it down. What we're going to do is notice that the left side, everything right here, is a perfect square trinomial. That means when we factor it, and you can write two of these at first if you want to, but I'm going to end up erasing one. When we factor just this side, the factors of 25 that add up to negative 10 would be negative 5 and negative 5, right? Negative 5 minus 5 is negative 10. We're not going to write two of them, though. We're going to write just one of them and square it. That's what makes it a perfect square trinomial. We don't have to write the same thing twice. We're just going to write it one time and square it. So we'll do that and set it equal to 27. Now we can pick up at the same step we started example 1c on. We can pew, pew, square root both sides. So the parentheses and the square go away. So we have x minus 5 equals plus or minus, hmm, what's the square root of 27? Okay, off to the side I'm going to factor tree 27. 3 times 9. 3 times 3. So we have a pair of 3's that get out of jail and one 3 that stays in. So this is plus or minus 3 square root 3. We almost have x all alone. We need to add 5 to both sides. And now you might be thinking, how on earth are we going to add 3 square root 3 and 5? Well, we're not. We can only add radicals, things with square roots, that have the same square roots. So we can't add those. What we are going to do is flip-flop the order. We're going to write the positive 5 first, and then we're going to write the plus minus 3 square root 3 after it. And that's the final answer. 
Go ahead and give the you try a shot and I'll write the answer in a second. And the answer to that you try is negative six plus or minus two square root seven. Last, we're going to take these trinomials and force them to be perfect square trinomials. So we're gonna force them to be like what we had in 1D. To do that, we have to figure out what we're gonna put in the box. It's going to be a perfect square. That's why it's called completing the square. And to figure out what number goes inside, we're gonna take B, divide it by two, and then square it. So B is the number in front of X. Remember A is in front of X squared and B is in front of X. All right, so we take that, divide it by two. 10 divided by 2 is 5, and 5 squared is 25. So that's what goes in the box. If we were to factor that, we would get x plus 5 squared, because that's a plus 10. And 5 times 5 is 25, and 5 plus 5 is 10. For 2b, we'll take the negative 8, divide it by 2, and we get negative 4. When you square negative 4, you get positive 16, so that's what goes in the square. If we were to factor that, we would get the quantity x minus 4 squared. And the last one, try on your own, and I'll put the answer in a second. For 2c, you should get 100 in the box, and when you factor it, you'd get x minus 10 squared. That's all we learned in class today. You're going to watch the video for examples three and four for your homework tonight, if you haven't already.